Professor Dr. N. Ganesh is working as a senior faculty, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SRM University, City Campus, Vadapalani, Chennai. He has more than 12 years of undergraduate and postgraduate teaching experience, which includes 5 years of research experience. He has trained many corporate batches on technologies such as mainframes, application systems 400, SAP, ABAP. He has published 10 articles in both international and national journals. He has presented several papers in both national and international conferences. He has written four books which are prescribed in Anna University Affiliated Colleges, SRM University and Bharat University. His research interests are software engineering, data mining and cloud computing. Welcome to UGC lecture series in computer science. We are going to see a series of lectures in the subject operating systems. So this subject is for the students studying in their fifth semester of their BSc degree program. This paper operating system belongs to paper number 8 of their fifth semester. So in today's lecture we are going to see few topics from unit 5. In unit 5 there are several topics out of which we are going to concentrate on Topics such as performance, secondary storage structures, the protection, goals, domain, access matrix, the security problem, authentication, threats, threat monitoring and encryption. So we have already seen a topic on IO system in one of our earlier lectures. So this lecture will be a continuation of our previous lecture. So in this lecture in our so I will give you a quick recap of whatever we have seen in our earlier lecture. In our earlier lecture we saw what an IO system is, what is an IO device, how an IO device communicates to the operating system and I showed you kernel architecture, kernel subsystem architecture. Then I also explained about the performance issues in using a kernel subsystem, kernel IO architecture. Now in today's lecture we will be seeing the contents as the principles of protection, domain structure and its implementation, access matrix, the security problem, security violation methods, security attacks and how to monitor security attacks, then about the program threats and then about the encryption as well the types of encryption. Now, what is protection? What are the principles of protection? How do you protect your system? If you, if you want to save, safeguard your system, safeguard the IO devices, what is an IO? Because in this lecture since if you are new with IO, IO is input output system. So if you want to safeguard your devices, it has to be protected. Now what are the uh, guiding principles required for protection. It is we require certain privileges for access. If I want to access the keyboard, this keyboard should be given due privilege and this mouse should be given privilege and the printer should be given certain privilege, privilege or even we can say it is a priority. Now here this guiding principle is privilege of least, principle of least privilege. So the programs, users and system should be given just enough privilege to perform the task. It limits damage if entity has a bug and gets abused. You would have seen this. Supposing if you have an operating system, if you, if you have installed an operating system and if it is pretty new, let us consider you have installed Windows XP operating system and if it is pretty new, then the execution time taken if you want to access a particular file, the execution time will be much more faster. Supposing if the other example, supposing we have installed an operating system sometime earlier, somewhere around uh, it has that installation has taken place some 2 years before and now you cannot definitely you cannot get the same speed as you could have in installing a new operating system. This is why, why this happens? It is because 
in your older operating system there is a possibility that an virus would have entered in and there is a possibility that there may be a bug in the code there is a possibility that you would have deleted certain dll file what is a dll file it is a library file that has been inbuilt for an operating system to perform so if you have done any of these tasks then definitely the performance of the operating system will be pretty slow so even you are not supposed to delete all these things and you are supposed to check for the virus attacks or for the worms attack or for the trojan horse attack we will see what a virus is what a worm what a trojan horse what is a virus virus is vital information resource under siege so it is a software which attacks the system and it and it uh, slows down the system a worm is it it even it is present in internally in the operating system uh, after installation what happens is that us it will be residing it residing silently and supposing if you if you try to execute it then it starts its execution from the background and this trojan horse it starts its execution when you are when your system has been connected to a network so in the in the virus case in the case of virus it gets affected your individual stand alone system will get affected in the case of trojan horse your system may be perfect but your neighbor system would have been affected with virus so since it has been connected through lan network connected the uh, virus may get affected from that system it will come to your system so there is a possibility and because of this your system may get slowed down so this has to be protected the other thing is it should be dynamic or changed by process as needed that is it should have a domain switching or privilege has to be escalated that is you should be given more privilege this system has to be given more privilege when compared to neighbor system if you think your system should be more secure and if you think that you have more valuable data when compared to other system your privilege level has to be escalated in terms of working with the network environment network environment so the other aspects of the principles of protection are it must consider grain aspect that is rough grain privilege management should be easier simpler but least privilege is to be done in terms of large chunks for example in the case of unix operating system in the case of handling a traditional unix processes either have the ability of the associated user or of the root i said in my, in one of my earlier lectures when you want to access a file that particular file has to be mounted first of all it should be mounted in order to access that particular file if it is not been mounted you cannot access the file similarly after accessing after closing the file that particular file has to be unmounted that is there in unix and for mounting and unmounting it goes to the root and then it gets mounted out so that is what has been said over here as it has the ability of the associated user or of the root fine grained management or more complex more overhead but more protective and the domain can be a user process or a procedure so these are the principles of protection now let us see what is a domain what is a domain what is a domain structure see you would have heard in your uh, when, when you could meet uh, some of your friends who is working in the software industry people will be asking what is the domain in which you are working what is the platform in which you are working do you mean to say that the both domain and platform are one and the same no domain is said to be the banking domain finance domain insurance domain retail domain platform is said to be the language that he is working in something like dot net something like java something like c c++ embedded vlsi so on vhdl so on so platform is different and domain is different so now we are going to see only about a domain structure so how the domain structure works in with respect to an io system here this io system domain structure has should have an access right access right is the right that is required for accessing a particular device say for example you may be having a set of computers which has been networked in a group but you will not be given the access to take print out only one system 
which will be kept in common which has an access to print. So, that access right has been denied for your system whereas, the access right has been given to the other system which is able to communicate with the printer device. So, that is a domain structure and the other thing is domain said to have a set of access rights. Now, in the case of domain implementation, a domain is equal to the user ID, the domain switch accomplished via file system. So, in other words, say for example, in your system when you are going to log in with your username, you will not be able to, you may not be able to access an internet. Supposing if the administrator logs in in the same system, he will be in a position to access the internet that is because of the access right and then in the case of domain implementation the domain switch accomplished via passwords. So, these are the ways in which the domain has been domain gets implemented. First thing is it got accomplished via a file system then in the case of file system if you are able to access and if the other is not able to access then that is because of file system. Second is it is accomplished via passwords that is you give password to it for accessing a particular privilege for using a particular privilege you give you assign certain passwords to it and su when you type su to commands uh, it temporarily switches to another user's domain when other domains passwords are provided in the case of unix operating system in the case of windows operating system you just like you give a password and you will be in a position to access the uh, IO devices. Then the other domain implementation is domain switching via commands. So, again in terms of Unix operating system sudo command prefix is used to execute a specified command in another domain if original domain has a privilege or password given. So, these are the ways of accessing a domain and this is how a domain gets implemented. Now, let us see the access matrix. What is an access matrix? An access matrix is used to view protection as a matrix and these rows in the access matrix represent the domains, rows represent the domains and the columns represent the objects. So, access of ij is the set of operations that a process executing in domain i can invoke an object j. Let us see with a tabular column example. So, this is how an access matrix looks like. So, this row represents the domain, column represents the object. Here we have d1, d2, d3, d4. So, in this row we have read operation and read operation whereas, this domain 2 has the print print mode and that is the reason it could print and it can have an access to the printer device. Domain 3 has a read operation and an execute or a write operation. Domain 4 has a read and write operation and in domain 4 in F3 it again has a read and write operation. So, this is how an access matrix table has been framed into and this says how to access a particular file, how to how to access, how to assign privileges or how privileges are been assigned to a particular file system for a particular user with respect to the IO devices. Then the next is next topic is about the security problem, what sort of security issues that we may get. Now, let us see the difference between a threat and an attack. What is a threat? For security, we require both threat and attack. So, what is a threat? A threat is a potential security violation whereas, an attack is an attempt to breach the security is to violate the security. Now, a system is secure if the resources used and accessed as indented under all circumstances that is which is unachievable and intruders or otherwise called as a crackers attempt to breach the security. So, an attack can be accidental or malicious, easier to protect against accidental than malicious misuse. So, this is a major point 
wherein we are supposed to know the difference between a threat and an attack. A threat is a security violation whereas an attack is a breach in security. So, let us discuss about the security violation methods after a break. Welcome back after the break. Before the break, we were seeing topics on I.O. system in which we were seeing a topic on the security problems pertaining to I.O. system. Now, and, and I was discussing the difference between the threat and an attack. Now, let us see the security violation methods. There are several security violation methods available. We will see one by one. First one is masquerading. What is masquerading? Masquerading is breaching the authentication. What is breaching? Violating the authentication. So, pretending to be an authorized user and to escalate privileges. Say for example, you are a user. You do not have access to a computer, to a printer resource. But if you pretend as if you are an administrator, and if you try to gain certain access rights as that of an administrator, then you are a masquerader. You are called as a masquerader, wherein you are violating your access rights. This computer does not have a printer access. And supposing if you type in your administrator key in an administrator password, and if you try to enter in through this computer, this can be tracked through the IP address of this computer that is available inside the computer. So, which means that you are violating and you pretend as if you are said to be the original user and you pretend to execute the task. That is called masquerading. The second violation method is replay attack as is or with message modification. So, you get a message and you try to you see the communication how it gets communicated from one system to the other one device to the other and you try to uh, check the validity check the path and you try to replay it it is called as a replay attack so that is also a violation of security models then the third point is man in the middle attack what do you mean by a man in the middle attack here the intruder sits in the data flow and masquerading as sender to receiver and vice versa in the middle this guy this intruder will be sitting as sender there will be a communication which will take place from the sender and to the receiver end and there will be again there will be a communication from the receiver to the sender in the in between this intruder will be sitting what he will do is he will track the path of sender and receiver and he will be monitoring what these guys are communicating, what the sender and receiver is communicating. So, what happens here is, after a while, this intruder, the sender communication will be sent to the intruder and this intruder in turn responds to the receiver and the receiver in turn responds to the intruder, intruder in turn responds to the sender. So, but that is not been known to both to the sender and receiver. That is called a man in the middle attack. Then the last security violation method is, session hijacking intercept an already established session to bypass its authentication it is called session hijacking now let us see a diagrammatic view of how the intruder works how the intruder sits and hijacks all the messages so here in this the sender sends a communication and the receiver receives it the receiver sends a communication and the sender receives it the attacker is viewing now in the case of masquerading, the sender sends communication which this attacker will be in a position only to view. But this communication after viewing, if he is not sending also, if the attacker has received the uh, from the receiver all the details of this receiver system, if it has been received by this attacker, 
then the attacker will communicate to the receiver and the receiver in turn will communicate to the attacker uh, aiming that he is communicating to the sender but actually speaking this guy this receiver is not communicating to the sender and only this attacker is communicating that is called masquerading man in the middle attack denotes the attacker will be communicating to both sender and receiver that is called man in the middle attack so these are the standard security attacks that are possible now let us see the program threats what are the different program threats that may encounter now i was speaking about a trojan horse a trojan horse is also a virus which takes place through a network through a network now here in this trojan horse a trojan horse is a code segment that misuses its environment it exploits mechanism for allowing programs written by users to be executed by other users it is a spyware or a pop up browser window which covered the channels up to 80% of spam delivered by spyware or infected systems i suppose supposing we are going to use uh, mail mailbox say for example yahoo.com or you have a mail id in uh, gmail you will be having a separate spam folder where and you will get all sort of junk messages when you try to click in your system may get affected by virus it may or it may not get affected supposing if it is going to get affected by virus so 80% of the mails that has been put on the junk folder are said to be the in the spam folder or said to have a virus which has been passed through a trojan horse now we will see the other programming threats the second program threat is trap door it specifies a user identifier or password that circumvents normal security procedures it could be included in a compiler the third program threat is the logic bomb the program that initiates a security incident under certain circumstances is called the logic bomb then the next thing is about this is what a program threat and we have one other program threat which is called as the stack and buffer overflow exploits a bug in a program failure to check bounds on inputs or arguments arguments are the parameters write passed arguments on the stack into the return address on stack unauthorized user or privilege escalation leads to stack or stack or buffer overflow then we will see the layout of a typical stack frame so here it is here we have a return address saved frame pointer automatic variable and parameters so this is a frame pointer so this denotes this layout denotes the program threat so this is how it works and it grows from the bottom and it reaches to the top so based on the explanation given for stack and buffer flow this diagram is shown now let us see what an encryption is what is an encryption what is encryption and what is decryption so supposing we are going to make a communication between the user that is a sender and a receiver so when you are going to make communication you uh, you infer that you have checked that whether someone is trying to hack all your information so in that case you are communicating the sender is communicating the receiver is receiving it the receiver is communicating the sender is receiving it that is client a let us consider a and b when a is communicating to b b receives it when b is communicating to a a should receive it without any issues that is to be a wired communication if it is of an unwired or even in the case of wired let us i will let me give you a practical example wherein you are speaking with your friend on a telephone telephone is a wired communication so here when you speak on to your friend on a telephone at the top of your house the telephone wire will be going to a nearby uh, cable unit so supposing if someone has uh, made a small cut in the telephone wire and someone is putting a tap on the telephone wire and if they are going to use their own telephone 
and if they are going to listen then they are said to be the attacker they are said to be the intruder wherein they are listening the communication from a to b and in turn from b to a so this is what is this is a severe program threat so now what they do is you have inferred that this there is a communication someone is listening to your uh, information someone is making a cross talk of all the informations so now what we do is we try to encrypt the message encryptors you have a communication but the thing is you might when you are sending it you send it in a different format when you say hello or when you say hi h a i you increment that h a i with two different alphabets with two different alphabets as i suppose everyone knows the alphabets from a to z h plus 2 becomes h i j so j becomes the first character after a a b c becomes the second character then i after i k becomes the third character so h is nothing but uh, k so h i j and j c k becomes your hi you you try to say it as hi but instead of saying it as hi you are saying it as j c k so when the intruder listens to a message he cannot understand what he might be wondering what j c k is it is because you have encrypted the text you wanted to say hi and that guy in turn says jck and this intruder will not be in a position to uh, understand what you people are saying that is encrypting you are manipulating the original message and you are giving it a value and then you are trying to send it to the receiver and the receiver in turn receiver has to decrypt whatever you have said when you say jck he has to minus 2 he has to do minus 2 in the alphabets and then he has to get the value as hai that is called when the receiver does like this he is doing a decryption that is called decryption and you are encrypting and he in turn when he says jck you are supposed to minus the values and you are supposed to get it as hai that is said to be decryption in your part so this is what encryption is encryption is changing the original text into a different format that format you call it as a cipher text when you change the original message to a different format we call it as a cipher text so here is it so he is this guy is writing a message and it is a plain text and this fellow this sender he is encrypting the message using some algorithm and then he is sending it and he is intimating the key to the receiver so that the receiver will decrypt using an algorithm and he reads the original message that is called encryption then the encryption algorithm is of consists of k keys and it's of it has keys and messages and when you encrypt a message you call it as a cipher text now let us see the two types of encryption one is symmetric encryption other one is asymmetric encryption symmetric encryption is same key is used to encrypt and decrypt and here we use an algorithm called as des algorithm des algorithm is the most commonly used encryption blocks encryption algorithm symmetric block encryption algorithm we have des algorithm a des algorithm and d des algorithm double data encryption algorithm des denotes data encryption standard and a des denotes advanced data encryption standard d des denotes double data encryption standard we have triple data encryption standard even so all these des algorithm come under symmetric encryption algorithm now we will see one other encryption type as an asymmetric encryption that is here in asymmetric encryption we use a public key encryption which is based on each user having two keys one is a public key other is a private key this pri public key is a published key that is used to encrypt the data whereas a private key 
is a key that is known only to individual user used to decrypt the data. It is not known to the other user that is called as a private key. So, this is how we use in an asymmetric encryption. So, now let us summarize whatever we have seen in today's lecture. We have seen the principles of protection. We have learnt about the domain structure and its implementation. We have learnt about the access matrix. We have seen the common security problem. We have discussed about the security violation methods. We have as well seen the various security attacks and the ways to monitor it. We have discussed about the various program threats. We have learnt about the encryption and the different types of encryption that is symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Now, let us see the possible questions that could arise from today's lecture. So, question number 1, what is a threat? What is an attack? Or even we can say it as, what is the difference between threat and an attack? Mention the various security violation methods. List the various program threats. What is encryption? So, with this, we come to end of this IO system topic.